Hello everybody, this is George Hepe from Budapest again. And Shell Borken from Stockholm. Okay, today we will talk about um, a very interesting topic that is uh, really exciting to me. Where your passion about decision making is coming from and what is all, you know, what this decision making business is about. Shell, uh, so how, how did you come to this topic? I mean, how, how did this, this story started, your journey started? Well, it actually started with a research project at the Stockholm University called Decide. And that was actually kicked off by Daniel Kahneman, the mm -hmm. Nobel Prize winner uh, 2002 in economics. Okay. Uh, and he received the prize actually by proving that we as humans normally really don't take rational decisions. He's a psychologist, right? So it's quite odd that he... he, he got actually the Nobel Prize in <laughs> economics, isn't it? That was... uh, really interesting. And it's even more interesting that in economic science, there is sort of a portal paragraph is that we do take rational decisions. Uh, yeah. So this is quite upsetting, isn't it? It is, yes. <laughs> so that, that was actually your the, the triggering thought or maybe uh, the, how the whole thing started. But how did you come to I mean, okay, uh, Daniel Kahneman received um, uh, a Nobel Prize basically crowning his, his, uh, his long-run uh, uh, scientific um, activity and journey. But uh, how could you, you know, make um, uh, a business out of it? Or how did you continue with this? Well, I can't say that we really did make a business out of it because we're still struggling with that. But what we did, we could do research as we are in the university. Uh, and we have done a lot of research and actually trying to create processes and tools to help people to make better decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, and as usual in when you do scientific research, there are two different types of research. It's one research where you actually solve problems as a business has already seen. And mm -hmm. those are quite easy to sell to the business. But if you do research in areas which the uh, business not really has uh, seen yet, it's not so easy. So uh, I think it's in research, it's quite an established fact that we as humans are bad in making rational decisions. Okay. But if you go back to business and ask them, is, is that a problem? They just say, no, no, we, we don't see that as a problem at all. Uh, so that's a little bit uphill to make a business out of that. Still, I think that in the future we will need better tools and processes to be able to make more rational decisions. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically um, in the mathematics um, there has been quite some uh, you know, processes, methodologies and procedures to, to calculate I don't know, probabilities of risk and calculate different things. So have you uh, been using that uh, or did you have some completely new approach in, in the mathematical platform too? Uh, actually we have uh, and part of the problem here, first of all, we as humans are, are notorious difficult to understand risks and we are mm. always trying to avoid risk more or less at any cost, <laughs> which is a little bit uh, seen from a mathematical point of view, stupid. Uh, but we also have another problem is that in this you very frequently run into the problem that you have quantitative and qualitative information as you need to process at the same time. Uh, and this is also a difficult topic because mm -hmm. it's quite easy to figure out which price is the lowest. But when you have to adjust the price with quality, then, then the problems start because you cannot normalize that into one, uh, one dimension. So yeah. yes, we have done a lot of research for that and also solved the mathematical problems behind that. Which means uh, that uh, you built um, a completely new mathematical methodology and uh, maybe, I don't know, it's a, is it a parameter hull or is it a set of algorithms that you apply for calculating this high complexity uh, problems or decision trees, I would say? 
Well, it is a, a set of algorithms, and those algorithms we will actually have an American patent for it because that is possible to to make to have a patent for mathematical algorithms. Um, okay. So uh, yes, and that is packed into a computational kernel, as you can use in very different situations to solve these difficult problems. And we will be talking a lot more about how to do this later on. But I, I would like to go back to Daniel Kahneman again okay. and try to explain why we have so difficult to make rational decisions. Should we? Yeah, sure. I think he was, he was talking about system one and system two way of thinking. Uh, but let's you know, hear your thoughts, how it, it actually you know, makes sense in, in, the, in the realm of businesses or business decisions. What is what is the system two and system system one and system two thinking? Well, th that's actually a lot of his research, and uh, his division there is really system one is a sort of based on memory and experiences, and we take not these are not really conscious decisions. Uh, yeah. And to exemplify that, this is perhaps a stupid example, but if I ask you what is three times seven? Twenty one. Of yes, of course, because you learned that in school. Yes. But you, you didn't really think about it, did you? No. <laughs> so this is what so, we call kind of instinctional answers or maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, the, you know, the, the way people used to talk about this, this kind of... Uh, uh, I think a lot of people call it intuition. And it's very much based on our previous experiences and what we learn. And we, we do take these very rapid uh, decisions based on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I were to ask you, what is 33 times 49? Uh, I grab my calculator and I tell you. <laughs> That's cheating. You, say you can't do that. No, now you need the system too, because you really need to think about this. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a very simple demonstration about the difference between System 1 and System 2. Mm -hmm. You can read Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking yes. Fast, Thinking Slow, if you want to know more. But um, th And this is very good. It served the human beings terrifically well. I mean, it takes us from the savant to the advanced society we have today. And of course, it helps us in the day-to-day -day decisions. And, and that's perfect helps us to select the toothpaste when we had to select by 24 different brands in the store and so on. Yes. But when it makes, when it goes into business decisions, it's, it's not that simple because this intuitive uh, decision you made, normally cre it will also create a bias. So yeah. you think that you take a, a rational decision, but the, that intuitive decision has already created a bias in favor of that first decision. Hmm. And it's nothing wrong with that, but it's very good if you could challenge that decision by having a process and preferably a tool to analyze further what the best decision would be. Uh -huh. So you say that basically we human beings are capable to do quick decisions or well-informed decisions, right? More or less so. Uh, and of course, we need to make a lot of quick decisions and about 98% of our de decisions in a, in a day to day life is made with system one mm -hmm. and 2% uh, is used in system two. Uh, but I think in, in business, you should really be more careful and perhaps use system two more. And perhaps you should also use the wisdom of your colleagues and being able to demonstrate how you, you did manage to get to that decision. What, what are the criteria for it? What were the alternatives and so on? And having a tool where you can present that is, should be very useful. Mm -hmm. But basically we are talking about uh, strategic decisions, right? Uh, in the business, uh, more than, uh, you know, if the roof is on fire, you don't have time to model <laughs> the model decision. But, um, in most of the cases when bringing you know uh, decisions that is uh, that has an effect uh, longer term or longer run then then you need to make a, a kind of uh, decision preparation decision making process that every company does anyway 
Right. Well, I think that when it goes for decision, we're really talking about three levels because you have the strategic level, you have the tactical level, and you have the operational level. Mm -hmm. If the roof is on fire, well, still, you could have thought through the decisions in forehand. <laughs> and then you're much more prepared when the roof actually is on fire. And mm -hmm. you could actually supply a model with the information at hand who help you to make a better decision. So you say that, uh, that basically you are preparing a system too, kind of way of thinking, and you drill it, you learn it, that becomes system one. So when the situation is there, this, you know, the, you know, the, the roof gets on fire, then you, you, you act in, instinctively. Or yes, you, 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 you can do that, actually. And, mm -hmm. But it, it's an expanded system one because you can use the knowledge from more human beings yes. and more experiences mm -hmm. and experiences not only you collected, others has collected. Mm -hmm. So there is different methods for different levels. Strategic levels, that is one level. Tactical level is one. And operational level is another level. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. still you need tools uh, and processes. Okay, so uh, the benefit basically for the business uh, decision makers is that if you are capable to do quick and well informed decisions, you make more profit. Simple as it is, no? Definitely. Uh, but there is also another aspect of this which not mm -hmm. frequently is mentioned because eventually you will make bad decisions. Yes. And this is this is okay. It's fine to do a bad decision. Of course it is. It's also very bad. You shouldn't make two bad decisions in the same area. So if you can learn from bad decisions, and by having a model and store it, you can always reassess your decisions. And you can learn also from bad decisions. You can see what what or the criteria were wrong, or what was uh, what what wrong did we do in the processing of that decision. Uh -huh. So that's a last and, and also a big benefit of working in another way. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, uh, we could continue probably for hours or more, no? <laughs> or maybe even <laughs> weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you. I mean, this is really interesting. I understand uh, how your passion and how all this, this process has been built up since uh, Daniel Kahneman received his uh, Nobel Prize. And uh, I... I truly believe that this this is something, you know, uh, interesting for for the decision makers today. Even if it's uh, if, you know, even if if the the, uh, the concept behind is is twenty years old, it's still it's still a burning issue. It's hot <laughs> potato, I would I would say, no. Even well, more was, because uh, now as I, as the, the the world is accelerating, hmm, people are getting more and more in trouble. Definitely. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, we will come back with new videos soon, I guess. Uh, so, yeah. Um, that's well, it, uh, I think we call it the day uh, before everybody goes to sleep and yeah, bored exactly. with us, isn't so, it? <laughs> okay, folks, uh, stay with us. We so, will come back soon. Uh, we will talk about some other things. Take care. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye now.